Have you ever gone to a fair or carnival or known someone who has and has won a goldfish there and put that goldfish in a fishbowl only to find out that that goldfish has died a week or two later? It was probably chalked up to it being a low quality fish and just forgotten about. But it was probably because that fishbowl was not suited to keep the fish alive because those goldfish can live for more than 15 years. In this video, I'm going to go over the steps that are needed in order to keep a fish alive in an aquarium. So now that we know that a goldfish can't survive in a bowl of stagnant water, it's time to go over what they do need. The two main things that are needed to keep a fish alive in a home aquarium are biological filtration and gas exchange. So the first thing that we need is filtration. And there are two different kinds of filtration. There's mechanical filtration and biological filtration. And both have their place in the home aquarium. Mechanical filtration isn't specifically needed to keep a fish alive. It will be needed in the long term to keep the fish alive. But it's basically just to clean the water so that you don't have particles of food and other things floating around in the water all the time. Mechanical filtration takes that out of the water. Typically, this is the filtration that regular people think of when they hear aquarium filtration. And it's not biological filtration that they think of. And mechanical filtration can be done with filters, but it can also be achieved with water changes, with a gravel vacuum, or something like that. This item in the corner of this tank back here is a sponge filter, and it's mostly in there just to do biological filtration. The mechanical filtration in this tank is really just done with water changes, taking water out and putting new clean water in. So the other form of filtration is biological filtration, and it is absolutely needed to keep fish alive in an aquarium. As fish live their lives, as in eating food and pooping, they produce ammonia, which is toxic when levels get too high and will kill the fish. To deal with this ammonia problem, there will be bacteria that lives on surfaces such as the rocks, the gravel, or sponges, and even on the glass of the aquarium itself. It's important to note that it may take weeks to establish an ample amount of bacteria to make the water livable for fish. The bacteria will feed on the ammonia and through scientific processes that won't be discussed in this video, the bacteria will convert the ammonia into nitrites and then into nitrates. There are a few different ways to establish the bacteria in your aquarium, but I will only cover the method that I suggest for beginning fish keepers. This method is called the fish in method. With this method, you will add a small number of fish to the aquarium to start with. You will feed the fish small amounts of food for the first couple weeks so that they don't produce very much waste and thus will produce less ammonia. After a couple weeks have gone by, you can increase the amount you feed your fish and start to add more fish to the aquarium. During these first couple weeks, I suggest frequent water changes of 25 to 40 percent of the water. So taking water out and putting new water in. And I suggest doing this once a week, if not more often, to help ensure the ammonia levels do not get too high. So once we have established a healthy amount of bacteria that are converting the ammonia into nitrates, then we have the nitrates to deal with. The nitrates are much less toxic than ammonia, but can still be toxic if they get too high. So to remove the nitrates from the water, we can do water changes. We will remove some of the water from the aquarium, but not all of it. And I suggest no more than 50% of the water. And we will replace it by putting new fresh water in the aquarium. Water changes of larger than 50% run a higher risk of killing the fish by changing water parameters in the aquarium too much for the fish to be able to adapt to. And how often you have to do water changes will depend on multiple factors, like the number of fish living in the aquarium, the size of the fish, the type of the fish, and how much you feed the fish. I suggest doing a water change every two weeks. However, my fish survived pretty well in the first handful of years in my fish keeping experience by only doing water changes about once a month. So that's the basics to biological filtration that keep fish alive. But there's still more steps we have to take. And the next step we're going to talk about is gas exchange. 
So just like us, fish need oxygen to survive too. And even the bacteria living in the aquarium use the oxygen as well. If nothing is done to promote gas exchange within the aquarium, the fish will eventually deplete the water of its oxygen and they'll be unable to breathe. Gas exchange is a process where gases are either released into or absorbed from the atmosphere. We can increase the amount of gas exchange in the water by agitating the water's surface. Agitation of the water's surface can easily be done with an air pump or filter. So as the air pump is pumping bubbles into the tank and the bubbles are rising and they're popping at the top of the surface, we're creating water surface agitation. The bubbles that are being pumped into the water are not actually increasing the oxygen content of the water by just being bubbles. They actually, they're not dissolving into the water. The only way they're increasing the oxygen in the water is by creating that surface agitation. And a lot of hang on the back filters that have a waterfall effect into the water will create that agitation as well and help with gas exchange. Most fish need help with gas exchange because they breathe oxygen through the water itself, like using their gills. But some fish, like these betas, will swim to the surface and take a gulp of air and not need to get oxygen through the water. Those are the two basic steps you need to keep a fish alive in an aquarium. You need the filtration and the gas exchange. But there's still one more topic I want to talk about. Goldfish don't require warm water, but if you plan on keeping tropical fish in your aquarium, you should think about getting a heater and setting it to the temperature for your specific fish's needs. Hopefully now you have enough information to keep your goldfish alive for more than two weeks. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back to future videos.